Morning all, uh, Paul here, Beardy Badger Publishing and Books in beautiful Bulbaroo in uh, the heart of Derbyshire. Um, welcome to the Friday feature. If you're not familiar with the Friday feature, well, I can only imagine you were stolen at birth by a big stork and made to live in a big nest. So if you are living in a big nest, I'll explain what it is. It's me waffling on about books, which I do all the time, but I just do it in front of a camera on a Friday for everyone's benefit. Anyway, without further ado, let's crack on. Now I'm gonna be a bit different this week, Oof, controversial, in that I'm gonna to touch on a book that I talked about last week that I'd started to read, but um, I'd got about 60 pages in, I think, by the time we did this last week. But I finished it now, and um, so I'm gonna tell you about it a bit more. It's this one, this is Memorial Device, David Keaton. Um, I, I absolutely love this book, and I can't believe it took me four years to get around to reading it, but um, a disgrace. I should have my head in shame. So, but it's such a good book. It's set in Airdrie, it's set around the punk po punk post post punk era, and um, it's written from different perspectives, different narratives, different protagonists, and it's 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 such a good good book to read, and it just it's it's more like an immersive experience than actually reading a book. You're there. You're there, you're in, in with the crowds, you know. And um, it took me back to my youth, if you like, in Dudley, Dudley, um, where JB's was like the legendary club where everybody played, and we had our bands like the Wonder Stuff, Ned's Tommy Dustbin, Bottle Eat Itself, Mighty Lemon Drops before that. And it was, you know, all these weird and wonderful characters that used to inhabit the scene and the people that you'd see around town. and. And it just took me back to that, you know, that, that sort of what the fabric of life was like back then. And, um, and it was a welcome return, shall we say. So um, thank you, uh, Mr. Keenan, for that. And definitely get on that one if you haven't read it already. So I'm going to talk about a couple of books, actually, that I've not read. They're new in the shop this week. And I just haven't, I haven't read them yet, obviously. Um, but they're both on my ever-growing TBR pile, which is so huge, I have to consult with air traffic control. And if the council got wind of it, they'd probably charge me some form of taxation. It's got its own postcode, it's that big. Anyway, this one, Percival Everett, and the book is called Percival Everett by Virgil Russell, um, Influx Press, 999. And uh, if you've watched these before, you'll know I have a, a lot of love for them. Percival Everett, a lot of love for Influx Press as well, to be fair. But um, a lot of Percival Everett, and the thing I love about this is that, yeah, the blurb is, a story inside a story inside a story. A man visits his ageing father in a nursing home, where his father writes the novel he imagines the son would write, or is the novel that the son imagines his father would imagine, if he were to imagine the kind of novel the son would write. That just grabs me straight away, so i um, dead looking forward to that. Percival was a really, really, was a really gifted writer, really talented writer, and um, let's say the two books Influx have put out from him so far, I Am Not Sidney Poitier was genius, um, thoroughly enjoyed that last year, and then I've read recently Damned If I Do, that one there, uh, which is a collection of short stories which are equally as genius, so high hopes for this one, and I'm sure they will be met. So, 999 on that one, Influx Press. Percival Everett by Virgil Russell. You can get on that one ASAP. Uh, the other one I'm going to talk about that's um, new in the shop this week is by our friends just up the road uh, in Sheffield, um, Influx Press. That's what am I talking about? Just talking about Influx Press and other stories. Sorry, I'm getting all muddled up with my presses. Um, and other stories, Sheffield based, not for profit uh, publisher, put out some absolutely stunning books. And this one looks to be no exception. It's this one here. Uh, three novels by Yudi Herrera, translated by Lisa Dillman. Hats off to the uh, the the good folks at Under the Stories for getting the translator on the front cover. Massively important, big big thing for me that. Um, Mexican writer, um, not someone I've read. So. And I've just been reading the blurb for these. There's three stories in here. They are Kingdom, Con Kingdom Cons, Signs Preceding the End of the World and the Transmigration of Bodies. And um, they they all sound different. They sound like they're not, your, you know, the stereotypical Mexico. It sounds like a real Mexico. It's 
it sounds a bit odd, but um, generally I think sometimes literature does fall into that trap, doesn't it, of playing to stereotypes and tropes, and I, I don't think this does, so um, I'm, I'm, I've got high hopes for this, and it's a beautiful little hardback. Look at that, beautiful cover, nice handleable size. So um, it's sixteen ninety nine, I think that one. Yeah, sixteen ninety nine, and other stories. One of the books actually I read about in the Guardian it was featured in the hundred best um, novels of the twenty first century, which was the science preceding the end of the world, I think. So um, high hopes for that one as well um, from our good friends up the road and other stories in Sheffield. So uh, hello to those, by the way. Hello, Steph Alinko. Um, so they're the books from this week as I say I've not read them yet but I've got really good vibes about them so what else can I waffle on for for a bit well as if I need any encouragement these came out this week they're on the website Porcupine Jack Cunnington Slantwise Kev Cueva Jackson our latest two books in the Travellers Poetry uh, series that we've launched Fantastic books, five are a piece. Um, we've had some good pre orders since we opened, some orders since we opened, not pre orders, you get them now. Um, as I say, five are a piece. Thanks ever so much, everybody who has, has bought these. Um, it's really important, actually, what, what we're trying to do with Traverse, what, you know, what it means to me. And it's um, all the poets on the Traverse range are, have a link to our region here in the East Midlands, you know. It's, um, we often get overlooked, and so. Um, one of the things I was part over about was trying to get something across, you know, give the, give people a platform, and that's what this is about. So we've got four books out now. We've got another one coming out, hopefully, in the next week or so, which is Ollie Cowley, Eyeless. So we've got these two, and we've got um, Uninformed Becky Deans, which came out earlier in the year, and Dog Like, Rory Allen. All of them are cracking books, all very different, all local poets all very different in terms of content in terms of form but all deserving of a fiver i think you know um so please yeah have a look on the website be the and then look for the shop for books bit column menu dropper and then look under bearded badger and um, you'll find them there free uk postage we're not posting posting outside to the eu at the moment we've just had so many in fact we've had, had a conversation today about it we've had so many books coming back i had one come back earlier in the week nothing written on it just circled return address took it to the post office they could say nothing wrong with it either so god knows when that's going to get resolved but hopefully it'll be soon and then the last book oh, i'm just moaning you know the last book i'm going to talk about is this one you by the marvellous Drew Gummerson. So, Drew, obviously, most of you know Drew is if you're following this, he's the writer of our debut book, Seven Nights at the Flamingo Hotel, um, which is a piece of genius writing, in my opinion. Why we published it? And this is a kind of accompaniment piece to that. It's the same protagonist uh, in his quest to get published. It's only short, it's like 28 page chapbook, um, four chapters, written very much from the same, well, it's the same protagonist, same second person writing, cut from the same cloth as Flamingo. So it's a really nice accompaniment piece to that. Um, and the thing with this one, we're going to, um, we're only doing a limited run on this book, we're not going to reprint or anything. So it's, uh, it, there's 200 copies that are going to be available either via the website, the shop, and we've sent some out to bookshops. Um, they're all signed by Drew himself, which is there. So um, you're getting a little bit of a limited edition thing going on there. If you're a big Drew Gummerson fan, if you enjoyed Flamingo Hotel, you'll love this thing. It's it's great, great little book. Looks beautiful as well, actually. Really nice. nice. Gosh, I wonder who did the type setting for that. It was me, it was me, it was me. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's the books for this week, guys. Um, a quick recap. This is a recap of a recap now. Um, this is Memorial Device, David Keenan. Great book, really enjoyed that. Get on that one. Uh, Percival Everett and uh, Percival Everett by Virgil Russell. Book within a book within a book. Um, Nine ninety nine that one. Influx Press. Our friends from down south. And then three novels by Yuri Herrera. Um, by the marvellous and other stories. Uh, we've got quite a few and other stories books here. On that one there. 
Um, there's another one there, actually. Um, translated by Lisa Dillman, 69 on that one. Lovely little hardback, well-respected Mexican writer. We should be reading more of that stuff, I think. And then, of course, the three books from our very own range, the two poetry books, Andrew Gumson. Five a piece, all of those are on the website, all pop in the shop, we've got copies in here. And um, that's that, I think. Uh, anything else going on? Um, not really. I'm here till five today. Tomorrow we're doing 10 till five. Um, uh, pop down, come say hello, have a little waffle of our books if you fancy it. Um, always up for that. We're now a national book token stocker and taker sounds wrong but that's what we do so yeah we can you can buy your national book tokens you can spend your national book tokens in it in our shop so that's good news um that's about it really if you want to come down come say hello come and take these off my hands if you want if you want um not for free i might say not for free anyway that's that let's let have a great weekend and um let me know what you think of these videos. Am I talking into the void or is it, you know, is it worth it? I quite like doing them, so I'm not bothered, but um, it'd be nice to know somebody listens to them occasionally. So, yeah, um, let me know. Give me a feedback. Drop, drop in the comments down here. I don't know if there is the comments are there, but you know, you know what to do. So have a great weekend and um, more of the same next week, I think. Adios amigos.